Afan. I don't know. You know, I'm not a very happy man, you know, I know. There are some things that have been happening that I don't really like about the world in general. Well, let me tell you this. You see, in this life we live, there are two things involved. It's either you're a man or you're a woman. If you're a woman, you are safe. But if you're a man, there are two things involved. It's either you're a civilian or you're in the military. If you're a civilian, you are safe. If you are in the military, there are two things involved. It's either you are in the office or you are at the war front. If you are in the office, you are safe. If you are at the war front, there are two things involved. It's either you kill somebody or somebody kill you. If you kill somebody, you are safe. If somebody kill you, there are two things involved. It's either you are being buried or your body is used for manure. If you are being buried, you are safe. If your body is being used for manure, there are two things involved. It's either you are used to grow plants, flowers, or you are used for trees. If you are used for flowers, you are safe. If you are used for trees, there are two things involved. It's either you are being used to make paper and tissue paper, or you are being used to make furniture. If you are used for furniture, you are safe. If you are used for tissue paper, there are two things involved. Either you are being used by a man or you are being used by a woman. If you are being used by a man, you are safe. Thank you. But if you are being used by a woman, there are two things involved. It's either she use you from the back or she use you from the front. If you are being used from the back, you are safe. If you are being used from the front, there are two things involved. It's either you contact gonorrhea or you contact HIV. If you contact gonorrhea, you are safe. If you contact HIV, there's only one thing involved. You will die. Thank you. Thank you. AIDS is for real. Let's try and play safe. Women, I respect women 100%. My mom is a woman, so it helps. My mom, when I was little, my mom, we are from, when in Nigeria, we call it the Ajekpaku. That's the poor people. I belong there. The Ajekpaku people, like when we were young, it's always hard for us to, you know, like buying Christmas clothes for us was very hard. The rich people, when they go shopping for Christmas, it's around 18th or 20th of December, when it's expensive. Those days, if you want to buy Christmas clothes, they want to buy Christmas clothes for us. My father used to buy it around January or February, when it's cheap. Before Christmas, it don't jump. <laughs> Buying chicken was hard also. We always would cry, Mommy, you never buy chicken, you never buy chicken. She was, we're disturbing her. 
Mommy, never buy chicken. 21st of December, chicken never come. 22nd, mommy, never buy. And all our neighbors don't buy chicken. My mom was frustrated. So she prepared jollof rice for us. That we should eat. When we finish eating, she will take us to um, the market to buy chicken and our Christmas club. We did not know that she put Billy on five. We ate and woke up on the 15th of January. In that day, we no complain again. The school I went to, Ajakpako School also, the name of the school, unlike the rich people, the school they go to in Nigeria, is only, you, yeah, the names are always nice. You hear names like King's College, Queen's College, Campus, Corona, Sweet Schools. The name of my school can even make you fail your exam. <laughs> Umukoro Development Community High School. How can you pass? And back then, we used to sit at the back. Me and my colleagues, we did not know anything in school. So go and hide at the back. So when the teacher walks into the class and goes like, okay, I want you to recite the two times table. Go! Those ones that are brilliant in front will just stand up. Two times one, two, two times two, four. We will know no book. We go there back. We'll be adding base. <laughs> One day I was carried away. I was adding this. The teacher was hearing bass from the back. And he told everybody to keep quiet. I did not hear him. So it was, I was the last person to do. He said, you stand up. I stood up. He said, you recite it alone. I said, teacher, I know where, well, though. The guy that was sitting next to me knew that if I don't get it, they will call us, they will call him. He said, hi, sir. Teacher said, what? He said, teacher, he said, you know where well now. You know, go leave. And teacher said, okay, you stand up, recite it two times to go. He told me to sit down. The boy stood up and said, Tisha, me self, I know well, though. Tisha, Tisha, all of us for here, we know well. That boy's name was Ochuko. That boy was very, was he from Wari? Do you know where Wari is in late Nigeria? Those, are, those people that are very different from other Nigerian people, you know? So different. You know, this math, and all these mathematics teachers, they make us so confused. You, go to, you get to the class, they'll say, X minus y equals to 2. Find x. See x there now. No, I'll find I'm going again. And there was this math they used to teach us those days, that if it takes three boys and uh, do you people do here, if it takes three boys and hour to clear grass in a plot of land, how long will it take, how many boys will solve your math? Teacher came into the class, asked the first boy, you, stand up. If it takes um, five boys and hour to clear grass in a plot of land, how long will it take eight boys? The boy stood up and he got it. They asked Ochuko, Ochuko, stand up. If it takes ten boys and hour to clear grass in a plot of land, how long will it take fifteen boys? Ochuko said, bros. Oh, wow, bros. If 10 boys don't clear grass, 15 boys no go, nothing there to clear now. They go pack the grass now. I'm telling you. Nigerian home videos, they are doing very well. Nigerian home videos are doing well. And I, when I was moving around, I saw some of their films here. And there are some things they do. I don't know if you've noticed it. There are some things they do that really trips me. When it comes to their names, the way they name their movies, they use how the actress and the actor looks. To name, I don't know if you've noticed it. If the actress is fine, like Genevieve, 
beautiful girl. RMD, handsome man. The name of the film will be True Love. <laughs> if it's Genevieve and Ramzinoa, fine people, they'll call it Love Forever. Genevieve and Pat Atta, fine people, they call it dying to love. But if it's Genevieve and Shego Arinze, you see the name, could this be love? And if you watch Nigerian films and the American films, it's different. Even the Indian movies, American films, when it comes to the end part, you know, the way they want to fight you, you know, like, no, never, you can't fuck with me, nigga, I'm gonna pop your ass, nigga, die, nigga, pop, 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 I shoot him, you know? And there are slow motions, they put slow motions where it's needed. You see the guy jumping out of the building, slow motion. Nigerian films, there's no part, nobody can jump from the building now. <laughs> so the only time they put slow motion is either when Ramzinoa wants to slap Genevieve, you see, you, I'm going to slap you! <laughs> That's the only effect they can do. <laughs> if you watch Indian films, Indian films, those people are terrible. They'll be saying, and they'll sing when they won't fight, they'll sing. If they're making love, they'll sing. Everything is singing. To go sing, now leave him. You see, Dramendra will just come and say, Bush, Kadaba. Then she's a One girl, where the thing, no concern, will just come and say, Nahi, Nahi. Where they concern you now? The next thing, music don't start. They don't start to the dance. Chinese films. Those ones, they move their lips like a hundred times and only two or three words will come out. You see Shin Fu and Shin Ha, last five. You see Shin Fu, you come out there. <laughs> you. You don't finish. Nigerian films, most times, some of their movies are good, some of them, they are not too good. I watched one the other day, there was the, the words, they were talking slow because they wanted to kill time. <laughs> Nothing there to talk. <laughs> Kanayo, oh Kanayo just came out. You, I am going to shoot you now, and you will die. <laughs> said to be said, oh, why do you want to shoot me? What did I do? Shut up! Shut up! Now die! The gunshot always sounds like knockout. Bah! 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 Ah! 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 You have shoot me. Now I will die. You know, there is this conventional thing in Ghana that I've noticed with the women. They are heavily endowed when it comes to their behind, you know. I know the only woman fist stop conversation when they are behind, they big. I'm telling you, you see two responsible men to discuss. So it's, I think the money we expect, and it's going to be like maybe like uh, 6.2 billion naira, uh, you know, but uh, we're going to get there, you know. And uh, we're supposed to be having a meeting with the expert trace like on Tuesday. And <laughs> seriously, and there is this thing that these women, they do nowadays that, that really trips me. They'll come to church and they'll sit in front and they confuse the pastors. Why? Because they wear short skirts. In Lagos, they do, you see. Fine girl, short skirt, you just sit down, front of pastor, confused pastor. <laughs> Lagos pastors, they try as much as possible not to look. 
Not to even get distracted. Like a Lagos pastor might be preaching, my brothers and my sisters, <laughs> glory, glory, glory. You see, I want to tell you that you have to be born again. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, Jesus. So what they do is that they will try not to go to that part because they don't want to be tempted. But in worry, worry pastors, they will look. But it's hard to look because you are on top and she's below. So they will turn the preaching to something that will make them go down. You see the pastor preaching about repentance. My brothers and my sisters, praise the Lord. You see, I want to tell you that you have to be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. Before I talk about repentance, I want to tell you that Abraham was a man that was assigned by God to look into the future. So Abraham was directed by God to be moving majestically. Abraham was moving spiritually. Abraham was moving steadily. And God told Abraham to bend down and look into the future. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Jesus The future was not clear. The future was not clear, but Abraham is a man that has hope and faith and wisdom. Abraham did not give up. He still moved and moved and bent down again. This time he looked and the future was clear. I know the worried people. You, you people, you don't have bikes. Do you have? Do you do bikes here? You don't. In Nigeria, we do bikes a lot, you know, because you know, we're trying to beat traffic and everything, you know. And most times, people you, in Lagos or other places of Nigeria, you have your money before you stop the bike, you know. Bike! Bike will stop. Yes, but they tell us. Okay, 200 naira, no problem. You enter and you pay. In worry, they have a technique. They don't have money normally. They don't have any naira in their pocket, but they will stop the bike. But they use a trick. They will stop the bike! Bike will stop. Where? Yeah. Another junction. 200 naira. There might be like two guys, you know? 200 naira for our tools. No problem. We'll pay. we we'll enter the bike. They will not say anything. When they are close to another junction, the guy behind the bike man will ask his friend, Voke. Voke. That gun, where I give you, eh? How many bullets they remain inside? Okay, we make matters worse. Bros. Bros now six bullets they remain. Old. The bike man goes, oh, but I don't die today. Which kind of one? Six bullets. Probably eight days I before. The bros. You don't forget that that bike man we carry us. We shoot her with two bullets. When they get to the next job, they come and say, hey, bros, how much be the money bike man? Oh, bros, no work, bro. Uh, that's free, that's free. Ladies and gentlemen, Comedy is something that is diverse. It's, everybody has their own techniques. What I do is I try as much as possible not to crack jokes. <laughs> but let me just do this one. Let me do this one. This is a joke, actually. But it happened in real life. I was there. I went to a banking hall in Lagos. I was seated in the banking hall. And because of this 25 billion naira thing in Nigeria, because every bank is like looking for 25 billion naira to be able to stand strong for a central bank. So now all the bankers are extremely nice looking for money to put in the bank. One man from America just came in. You will know the way he was dressed and the way he was talking. He walked to the cashier and said, hello, madam, can I see your fucking manager, please? He said, sir, please, we don't use such words here, please. You can, please, this is a banking hall. What the fuck are you telling me? I want to see your fucking manager. You're telling me not to. What the, are you fucking crazy? He said, sir, please, you can't use such words here. Please, it's a banking hall. Fuck you, man. I want to see your fucking manager. You're telling me this is a fucking banking hall. What the fuck are you talking about? He said, please, sir, I'm afraid I have to ask you to leave. Said, you want to fuck you? The manager came down. I like, said, sir, what seems to be the problem? Are you the fucking manager? If you're not the fucking manager, get on my fucking face, man. He said, sir, please, you don't use such words. This is a banking hall. Fuck hell, man. Fuck all you niggas, man. Fuck! Because I wanted to open an account with two million dollars in this fucking bag. Fuck all your niggas. The manager said, sir, come. <laughs> what did you say? Yeah, I want to open a fucking account with two million dollars. You guys are telling me fucking rubbish. Two million dollars. What was this fucking guy telling you? 
My name is Tony. I'm the fucking manager. Let's go to my fucking office. So, yeah. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, most comedians, the tribe you're supposed to go to hit a punchline before they leave. It's a, it's a tradition. You crack jokes, you crack jokes, you jeez, you hit the crowd, and when everybody is all there, you know, standing ovation and everything, you say, thank you very much, God bless you, good night. But me, I don't care. I leave anytime I like. 